So a little while ago now, what seems like an age ago, I spoke about doing the Hypermotard rebuild, a freshen up of it, a, a revamp, a clean up, a restoration, whatever you want to call it. So this is the start of my Hypermotard rebuild, restoration, make it better series. Welcome back to the garage and welcome back to the Ducati Hypermotard restoration project. Again, there's been a slight delay since the last video, do apologize, but things have been ongoing. And in this video, we will attempt to start this motorcycle. I can't say whether it's gonna start or not. I'm sort of 50-50 whether it's gonna actually work, but we will at least attempt to start this motorcycle in this video. So uh, if you're interested in my Ducati Hypermotard and look at how fantastic it's looking, you can't not be interested in this machine, can you? Can you? Well, if you are, grab yourself a cup of tea and chop tea, roll the intro. So what has been going on since we last spoke? Well, I have done a few little jobs on this bike. I fitted the handlebars, I've uh, routed the throttle cable and connected the throttle, I've more or less got everything buttoned up, you know, engine wise. When you have the induction kit, of course, you no longer have the air box. So there's nowhere to mount like the coil packs at the top here. Well, in the last video, I mentioned that uh, I needed some brackets made up and a couple of people responded to me on Instagram. So those who responded, thank you very much. But Jamie actually responded first and said, look, I run an engineering company. I can make you the brackets you need. So I basically sent in this 3D printed bracket. I didn't want to use this because I thought if it gets hot, it may start melting. And it's a bit rubbish, isn't it? A plastic 3D printed bracket. So I sent him this and he come back with this. He sent me back a billet bracket. This is full billet. So he's programmed this into a CNC machine and basically mapped it and made a full billet version of that bracket and, and gave me a spare one. So I fitted one and I've got one spare. So Jamie, you know, absolutely above and beyond, my friend, absolutely incredible. So if you want any sort of custom parts making, you know, this is, this is, what, this is what Jamie does at Marshman. He's down in Dorset, down at uh, Shepton Mallet in Somerset, actually not Dorset. So give him a ring, go on his website. I mean, incredible. So if you need anything custom made for your motorcycle, you know, in low volumes, he's your man, absolutely brilliant. So massive th thumbs up, Jamie. Can't thank you enough, buddy. And not only did he make the bracket for the coils that go up the top, he's made the bracket for the coils at the bottom as well. Where, so these mount up underneath the other coil, coil on this bracket here, and then also the rectifier will mount. So he's also made that one for me. So above and beyond, Jamie, thank you very, very much. So once that's all mounted, it looks something like this. You've got a breather for the crankcase, which goes through one of those holes. You've also got another little filter on here, which is just like the map air pressure sensor, because normally that would be in the air box, but it's obviously to atmosphere here. So it's just a little little filter over it to protect it. And obviously the coil pack on top and the bracket there. So yeah, absolutely uh, unbelievable. I've also got this fine selection of bling to go onto the bike. Now I'm sure, I hope you guys saw the video where I went to see the guys down at Hell Performance and we, we made up these calipers, uh, brake master cylinder, clutch master cylinder, rear caliper and rear master cylinder. So they've sorted me right out, the guys at Hell Performance. And I'll put a link to that video at the top. Absolutely amazing what those guys are doing down here. And the quality of these calipers is absolutely incredible. And I can't, I can't wait to uh, get out, get these on and test to see what these are like but they're absolutely beautiful. So a massive thanks to the guys down at Hell. Obviously I've got the full uh, brake lines, clutch lines as well to go on. But first of all, massive thanks to Steve and the team down there. Absolutely amazing. I've also got some bling, CNC racing bling, just, to, just finishing touches to the bike really. So that the center hub, the wheel nuts and stuff like that, you know, just to sort of finish things off rather than fitting old dirty old nuts to the bike just little nice little finishing touches with like these red all red and black sort of theme i'm not going too outlandish and i've also got myself one of their uh, primac slipper clutches now i'm not going to fit this straight away i'm going to run the bike you know with the standard clutch in it while i run it in and then probably swap over to the slipper clutch a bit later so um yeah cnc racing 
go check them out. All sorts of beautiful parts for all sorts of beautiful bikes, including Ducatis. One last shout out, or second to last shout out, to the guys at Motormaster. So I've got a full set of Motormaster discs also to go on the bike because the discs are okay, but it's, you know, it's going back to get a brand new, this machine really. So a full set of their Halo discs for the Ducati. So love that. Also a massive thank you to my mate Adam at Hampshire Custom Alloys. I decided to get the wheels powder coated black as well because they were looking a little bit tatty and I, and I really like the shiny sort of black finish. So front and rear wheels also powder coated by the guys down at Hampshire Custom Alloys Services. Or well, just Hampshire Custom Alloys, I'll put a link in the description. But there we are, there is the bling. There is the bike. Let's put the two together. I'm not stripping the engine down completely. I'm gonna take the casings off, get them Cerakoted, but I'm just gonna sand down and paint the main body of the engine. I'm not stripping the whole engine down and separating crankcases and stuff. I'm not going quite that far. Now for the rear suspension, a Ducati works with these little height, height adjustable rods, which ties the, the back end together. And I've got a couple of different ones of these. I can't even remember why I ended up with two different colors, but chrome or red. Chrome or red? Could be a mistake, but I'm thinking red. A little bit of grease on this stuff. Yeah, that, that's, that's not really a little bit. on the top of the shock so it eases in nicely give it a nip and now the trickier part this bolt slides through the swinging arm captures everything and then there's a little nut which goes into a recess here this you've got to be careful you don't lose this into the swinging arm or I'm gonna to have to take the swinging arm off to get that back out of it so, a bit more grease on the shaft. Hold that there. Let me take this. We try like hell not to, not to drop it. I think that's one of them. This is the problem with doing these jobs. It's you know getting it back together without, without damaging anything, without scratching any of this finish. It's quite stressful actually. That goes in there. There we go. Oh, that's in. It's now caught now. But it just needed a bit of wiggling, a bit of, a bit of whacking, a bit of a percussive encouragement. Just to check. And there's a little rubber grommet just to pop in here to finish things off. If you look closely, or even not so closely, there's quite a lot of paint flaking on the on the casings and especially on the actual engine. It's quite a common thing, apparently, with Ducatis of this age. And it, it really brings down the whole overall feel and, and of the whole bike. So as part of this rebuild, we're gonna take the engine out of the frame, repaint it, get these casings, uh, probably keracoated, coated, that fancy coating which is done. Basically strip the whole bike down and go through the whole bike Anything which is a little bit tatty. I mean, there's some of the bolts and stuff are a little bit tatty. So go through the whole bike, refresh everything. There we are, all fully assembled. I've talked to everything. Also, I forgot, I got the exhaust. So uh, I meant, meant to fit the exhaust before I um, attempted to do, put the swinging arm in. Because I remember when I took this off, I managed to scratch all the finish. But as you can see, that exhaust is actually looking rather sexy because I've had the whole, the whole exhaust professionally polished. Let me show you the rest of it. It cost me, I think, £65 to have it all professionally polished. So I'll obviously put the rest of it back on when the bike's on the floor, but I wanted to get it in now, you know, while all the rear linkage was going in. I really wanted to get it in before I put the shock on. Uh, I may even have to loosen the shock, pull it back so I can get to the other nut to tighten it up. But, yeah, lovely polished exhaust to go back on. And the end can as well. Just work some fresh grease into these roller bearings. I didn't replace these. I mean, the bike had only covered 4,000 miles. So, you know, things, things like this. 
they were all, you know, within spec and they hadn't measured it, but it was fine when I took it apart. So these are new Motor Master discs, as I mentioned. So I've got a new rear disc as well as front discs. Somewhere in all this lot, <clears throat> there's some rear caliper bolts. Oh, and The actual bodywork is in really good condition. The frame's in really good condition. The subframe's in really good condition. But I want to take it all down, see what I find underneath the seat, you know, underneath the tank. What's the overall condition of the bike going to be like? What can I do to improve it? It's, this is the aims we have here. My bike has got the steering damper, the optional Ducati steering damper, which is quite nice, the performance parts. And a lot of people saying in my vid, why am I not running any mirrors? Well, it has got mirrors. The mirrors are here and they fold out of the end of the handguards, which is a really neat touch on this bike. And you can actually see something out of them. They've got some movement here. You adjust that and you can loosen that and that moves. I've actually broken, <laughs> I've broken this side, leaning the bike against the wall. It was cracked anyway, and I'd glued it. So I'm probably going to replace these with carbon. Keep the same guards, but a carbon piece. I found some which I think will do the job. So uh, let's give it a whirl anyway. If, if not, I'll have to use the, they're just a tiny little bit longer than the original disc bolts. And the heads stick up a tiny bit more. So I'm going to try them. Obviously, if they don't fit, then uh, I'll have to go back to standards. Ooh. Just need to see if they clear the rear wheel. Just like that. So the bolts are also well clear of the wheel. But they do stick through a little bit too much, don't they? Uh, they're due for now. They're due for now. God, look at it with the wheel on. Oh, looks good with the wheel on take off the rear foot pegs, get the whole exhaust system polished probably as well. As you can see, quite a lot of plans for this bike. Oh, I've got plans. I've got plans. So it's probably about that time to uh, put the rear caliper in position as well. So this is the Hell uh, rear caliper, underslung rear caliper. Excellent. There we go. Pins in. Okay. Uh, one's there. Oh, made to measure. Let's just see if these these bolts are going to work. Yeah, they're going to work as well. Get it locked tight. Beautiful. That is gorgeous. Now we've got all that on. It's time to fit the rear sprocket and the bling bits. I must say a massive thank you to DR Bikes for the rental sprocket and chain kit. They sent that to me three years ago and it's taken me three years to actually use it. So massive, massive thank you to DR Bikes. I did clean up the standard nuts a little bit, but they, you know, they're a bit corroded. They're not the sexiest. And I thought a nice black nut will finish it off. It's the finishing touches, isn't it? It's the finishing touches. There's also a nice anodized black one of these to go on as well. Ooh, ooh, ooh. How nice does that look? Oh, absolutely gorgeous. The paint's starting to flake a little bit on the Olin spring, so I may get their suspension sent off to be refreshed. You, you can see on the heads here that it's a little, looking a little bit tired. It's not too bad on the heads. And this side of the engine isn't quite as bad again. You can see the, the paint again missing on the rear part of the engine here. The casings this side aren't too bad, but we'll get all those redone as well. But just get the whole thing looking beautiful again. Even more beautiful. Sorry, YouTube gods, I have sinned. It's been a week since I last worked on this bike, but I've got an excuse. I've got tonsillitis, which knocked me out for a few days. So. Uh, when I was starting to recover, I've started to do a little bit more tinkering on this without the camera on, so I do apologise. I fitted the brake lines, some of the brake caliper, trial fitted the brake calipers. Let me just show you around it quickly. Who's ever heard of a 52 year old man getting tonsillitis? I had it a couple of times when I was a kid, and they, in those days, used to whip your tonsils out at a drop of a hat. And if I got it again, they said they're going to take my tonsils out. But I don't fancy having my tonsils out now. 
I think it's been 40 years since I've last had it, so it should be okay. So as I mentioned, I have done a little bit of work to the brake lines and stuff while you've been away. I've fitted the lines, uh, the calipers, just, just trial fitted, these aren't tight. I haven't put the pads in these yet. Um, obviously I've, you need to put the discs on, or well, I put the front discs on, you saw me put the back one on. But yeah, we're basically uh, sort of ready to go with the calipers. It looks absolutely amazing. I'm so pleased with how it's looking. But we just got to put the pads pads in the calipers and then I think I'm ready to bolt it all down. And I've also got the clutch all mounted and the wires run, you know, the clutch lines run through the bike down to the uh, the slave cylinder here. You get all of this with the hell calipers. You get all various different spaces for the calipers to space them. Uh, you know, off of the forks when you mount them, different sizes, different size bolts for mounting as well. And obviously all the banjos, all the crush washers, you know, everything you need basically. And for these to fit on my bike, I need the three mil spacers, which are actually not ones which come with the kit. You know, the smallest you get with the kit is a five mil, uh, wherever they are. I think they're the, yeah, they're, the, they're the five mil. I needed a three mil, so I contacted Steve and he sent me out some three mils. Um, and that spaces it perfectly away so the disc sits, you know, where it should be sitting uh, in relation to the pad. Slide in there. Pad either side. Get pressure on the pad, oh, it's not going to be difficult at all. It's going to be very easy. All done. Probably changed the gearing slightly. It's quite tall geared. It will do like 130, no problem at all. And you don't need that, it doesn't need to be that high geared. So I'm probably going to look at the gearing, change that, new chain of sprockets, new tyres, currently running mismatched tyres, which I hate the feel of. Tail tidy is huge on these as well. I don't know what can be done with the tail tidy because you've got to think about the exhaust, perhaps some different indicators, go LED on the indicators got the full termy on it I may cut it down it's quite long I may just take a couple of inches out of it just to bring it in a little bit wow this is incredibly exciting I'm about to lift the bike off of the ramp um, it was bolted down I just loosened all the bolts I've got some tires on it which I'll talk about in a minute but uh, it's sort of it's very very heavy of course I don't know much it weighs but I'm gonna try and lift it off I'm gonna get chops junior on one end and me on the other and uh, yeah, let's try and get this thing off, off of this stand. I mean, it actually looks like a motorcycle now. Have a look at this. I mean, there she is. <laughs> it's now a motorcycle. It's no longer just a frame, it's a motorcycle. So we've got the Michelin Power GP2s. You know, as most will know, or some will know, I went on the launch of this tire with Michelin at Hareth and we did some track testing and road testing. And I said, I'd like to try these on the road. So got some Power GP2s on this machine. Um, courtesy of Michelin, they did send me these, so really, really appreciated. Michelin, thank you very, very much. But unfortunately, the rear tyre is not going to be in stock for another two weeks. So I've got an old scrub on the rear, <laughs> to uh, just so I can get the bike rolling. I don't want to wait two weeks until I can get the bike started. So this is it really, bike comes off the stand now. Um, hopefully, if we can do it without permanently injuring our backs, and uh, yeah, I can get it on the bike ramp and then we can try, finish it off, you know, fuel tank, last of the connect electrical connectors at the top here and obviously the feed to the uh, fuel pump power and all of that. So get that all finished off. Um, yeah, and let's try and start this bloody thing. Four years in the making and it's finally gonna be back on its wheels again. Wow. Let's get a feel for the weight. I mean, it may be- right, it, it across there, get a feel for the weight. It's really, no way, no way. It must weigh 100 kilos. You get the front, the, that's more than 100 kilos. Oh, this is ridiculous. Right, you should bend your knees. Oh, that's heavy, isn't it? Oh, it's on the ground. I haven't got a side stand on there, oh. so you have to stand and hold it now. So I can fit. No, I'm joking. Oh. <laughs> there she is. 
stuck on her wheels. It's actually now a motorcycle. It's actually now a motorcycle, no longer a box of bits. It's actually now a motorcycle. Right, let's get it on the lift. Finally, on the bench, there she be, ready for action. So there she is on the ramp, ready to progress now. Now I can take off, you know, the, the engine stand. This is from Molnar Performance, actually. A few people are asking about this. I mean, how fantastic has it been? We've been able to build the bike from the engine on this stand. It's been a lifesaver. So. Molnar Performance, I'll put a link below. A few people asking uh, where that came from, but I can take that off now, which means I can get the rear sets on. You know, I, I can just finish this bike now, but I need to get the fuel tank on. I, I don't think, I think it's gonna to have to be the next episode, guys. I'm really sorry, the actual starting. This one is sort of gone on for a, too, too long, really. So uh, next time we will start this bike so we can get the tank on, do everything else then. But I think for this one, that is it, we're gonna, we're gonna finish now. I'm sorry, I won't keep you waiting very long. You know, you, I'll be back soon with, uh, with starting this machine, you know. Within, within a week or so, there'll be the video of starting this, I promise, so I'm not gonna keep you hanging on for too long. But this video, I think it's just gonna go on way too long if I try and squeeze it all in the, into this episode. So uh, we are getting very, very close, hopefully. <laughs> to that startup, at least trying to start this thing anyway. But it's absolutely brilliant to see it on its wheels. It is now a motorcycle, not just a bike in boxes. Oh, I can't wait. I'm gonna be riding this within a couple of weeks. I'm gonna be out on this, running it in. Oh, so exciting. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one very, very soon. Is this actually going to work? Is this actually going to fire? Here we go, fuel's in it. Turn it on, future lights on.